from the Booked, the bookstore education podcast brought to you by the American Booksellers Association. This episode is part of our Free Expression Friday series, an interview series from ABA's American Booksellers for Free Expression, celebrating the amazing work of booksellers, organizers, and book people in general fighting for the right to read. I am once again here talking to Kay Karimian of the Non-Binarian Book Bike. Kay, for folks who haven't met you, who haven't heard any of our discussions with you in the past, can you just introduce yourself and say who you are and what the Non-Binarian Book Bike is? Yes. Hello, I'm Kay Karimian. I use they, them pronouns. I'm a career bookseller of over 15 years in bookselling. And I am the founder of the Non-Binarian Book Bike, which has been operating for two years now. This is the the two-year anniversary this October. Um, And the Book Bike, uh, its mission is a mobile mutual aid initiative that is entirely volunteer-run and trans-led, distributing free queer books for all ages, all genres across Brooklyn, specifically in book deserts. So that is that is the the short of the who I am and the what I do as I I very much am the book by the, the non-binarian is me and I am the non-binarian in many ways. Uh the non-binarian is a collective. Um so there are many more people than me behind the non-binarian and its organizing efforts and distribution efforts. Um but as I founded it um and we are now growing, uh, I'm very much the person kind of at the, the, the head of the ship, uh, as, as there have been other folks who have been in, in, uh, in step with me that maybe saw what was on our horizon before I did. It, it took me getting there to say, uh, we're now going to be opening the non-binary bookstore. Yes, because we are now, we're talking at a very important time for the bike. You yes. are, you just, you just said it. The non-binary book bike is becoming the non-binary bookstore. Um, how's that going? <laughs> um, it's super exciting. Um, I think many uh, industry folks can relate to the idea of, of like envisioning your, your dream store. Um, and it may be not feeling like attainable or that it might happen for you. And, um, the fact that we're, we're really going for it now, um, it still feels a little surreal. Um, but we have a great team of folks, um, and, I mentioned we're we're made up of a, a collective of largely industry professionals, so people who have also 10, 15 years plus of book selling. So we have buyers and event managers and operations. Like we have folks from every background in book selling. And so I feel every bit as prepared as I possibly can be to do like the one big thing I haven't done in book selling, which is own and operate a store. Um, It will be a worker owner co-op. So uh, eventually once we, once we get there, um, I won't be alone in that step. Um, But cobbling together like everyone's respective skill and knowledge sharing has always been integral to how the book bike has run. So it, it really just feels um, like an extension of what we're already doing because the bookstore is going to stay rooted in not just the mission, but in the inventory um, will be exclusively queer. So the book bike distributing free queer books, the bookstore will be carrying exclusively queer books also for all ages and all genres. So it's going really well because like, we know what we're doing. Like we, we are solid in what we're doing because we've been doing it right. The past two years with the book bike, um, the the organizing the fundraising and the like figuring out how to do all the bureaucratic paperworky stuff is like the less than fun behind the scenes part of it all but um it's moving very quickly and it's very exciting 
So can you expand a little bit on how opening a storefront is continuing the mission of the book bike? Because of course, you know, there's a big difference, right? The the book bike, you're giving away books and the storefront, you're selling books. Can you talk about how they're both part of the same mission, which is to support access to, to queer literature? Absolutely. Um, so the bike will still be continuing its work as we open the storefront. The book bike will still be an arm of the non-binarian. So we'll continue be to to be offering free queer books by book bike. Um, but what we've been limited to in our work because it's obviously a bike um, is it's only when it's seasonally appropriate that we can get out. Um, and so while we provide access for all, um, it is also tempered by uh, like environmental circumstances. So in this way, people will not only be able to continue to get it outside of our store where we're bringing the access to them, but year round, the book bike will have a home. And so when the bike would typically just be in a storage unit, it means people can come and visit the bike and we'll still continue to have free books available year round. So that's just like something I I do want um, for folks who've supported the bike and have fun with the bike or are interested in in following what we're going to be doing with the store, um, that that is still staying uh, since that is like a very beloved part of what access means um, is books are expensive and like literally people being able to own a book, the the financial barrier is is one of many barriers for, for people to not see themselves in a book. Um, and so it's like, if we can, if we can eliminate one of those barriers, um, that's why mobile was originally part of our mission too, was again, like not, not living near to a bookstore. Um, but with the storefront, yes, we will be selling books too. And like the name of the game as a retailer will be sales. Um, a way in which we're also looking to, um, expand on, on the, idea of book ownership should be a right and not a privilege and reducing as many barriers as possible within our own store uh, model is it will be new and used. So new books, um, you know, the, the cost of the book is printed on the book itself, but when it comes to used books, um, the book bike is very experienced in how we source our books And so we're going to continue to source exclusively queer books to sell used as well as to distribute for free. So, you know, we get a lot of advanced reader copies. Those will always be free. Um, Now where like all of our or where all of our inventory before was just going to the bike, we're going to be adjudicating a little bit more um, because we will now have to pay rent and wages. Um, So we'll we'll have to. Um, look a little bit more closely at what we're able to part with. But anything that is purchased for the bike, we do have wish lists. And obviously, since we'll have the arm of the bike there with the store, means people can buy from the store, donate to the bike, so that people can get free books. Um, so having used means, you know, we're, we're likely going to be looking at things at like a 50% from list price, whether it's a hardcover paperback and like, you know, when, when a hardcover is like 32 bucks after tax these days, like on the cheaper end, half price, it's now it's the cost of a paperback and it feels like a, a, a steal. And even still trying to think of more ways of like discounting, we're going to have a pledge wall, um, to, to be like overly cute about it. It's a a gay, what you can pay, what you can wall. So that, um, kind of like in that, uh, coffee shop culture of suspending a coffee, like you buy a coffee for the person behind you. Um, people can pledge and it'll be like publicly in the store itself. So that really between it being, that there's new and there's used and there's sponsored books and there's free books that the idea in having a storefront means like 
yes, we're going to be asking people to pay for books, but we're hoping that if cost is a barrier, we're making it as easy as possible for people to still get a book and not just like the luck of the draw, which is kind of the name of the game when it comes to free a lot of the times, but hopefully something that like people are excited and want to read and like would maybe not have been able to get for a while because it's new. The thing they wanted to get was a brand new book that was released now because they were able to find it marked down and sponsored or what have you from these different options cobbled together. It means that that person gets to be a part of that conversation in the moment that it's happening. They get to uh, like have that, that like invitation into the conversation as it's happening Um, and something I'm really excited about with the storefront that obviously was never a possibility with the bike is it means we can bring people in to gather. Um, we are going to be COVID conscious. So when I say gathering, um, like it really means there will be a physical place in which people can come to browse the books, to, see what we have. You know, with the bike, we could only have so much out at a time. It's a cargo bike, so it's limited. Here we're going to have, it's it's wild to think about because like all of our stuff is in our storage unit. So when we're like filling the bike and people ask, oh, what do you have available? It's like, I can see everything that we don't have with us in the moment. And here instead, it'll get to be like, I feel like a kid in a candy store just thinking about how we're going to be able to put everything out there for people. And that feels really exciting. Even if we're going to be an all queer store, there's nothing that says you have to show your gay card at the door to shop there. Um, And something I've always been cognizant of in my past book selling, I've never worked at a queer owned shop or explicitly inventoried shop. Um, And so like, I've always been cognizant that anytime a customer is asking for a queer book outright. Um, It's vulnerable making, whether it is on behalf of themselves or for someone else. In in seeking a bookseller's assistance, even just to find the the section, if there is one, um, it can mean outing themselves, um, even though I'm visibly queer. And so they can pretty readily see like, it is safe to talk to this person and, and say these things to this person. It doesn't mean that person feels safe with whomever else might be hearing around them and where they are in the store. Um, you know, especially if they're younger, I think about this all the time with like kids or I think more likely teenagers who are most likely brought into a store with Um, like an adult guardian or companion. And so maybe that kid either doesn't have the vocabulary yet to name, like I'm looking for the queer section or if they aren't out or they themselves don't know that about themselves yet. Um, And so I'm like just trying to articulate to another person the thing you're looking for in a general interest bookstore um, isn't, isn't always safe. And so that's, that's where the bike came from in, in like why it's going to be ex- exclusively queer and for all ages and all genres was because, you know, if, if anyone who comes up and they hear free, no one's judging you of like, oh, well, are you queer? Are you out? Are you this? Are you that? To look at these books at the bike. Right. And now in the store, because it'll be very clear what's going on in the store. Again, no one's asking for your 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 queer card at the door to say, can you shop here? Are you queer enough yet? Um, and people can just come in. And sure, they can absolutely still talk to any of the booksellers, myself working there, but they can also independently find what they are looking for, what they didn't know they were looking for. Um it is likelier that they'll be able to have a safer experience. Um, It might mean that in browsing, they're able to talk to another shopper in the area that they're browsing because they'll like find the common interest with someone 
um, because we are going to, going to have it be for all ages, like we will have kids and middle grade, like um, the reading levels as well as like the subgenres. Um, like I'm really excited for like kids graphic novels being a section because kids graphic novels are doing so much beautiful work today. Um, and so I'm I'm like in in this moment in in answering this now I'm picturing these moments like I'm picturing the like 12 13 year olds who are excited looking at the book and then there's a kid who you know maybe they don't have another like visibly queer kid in their school um and then here in the store they don't have to offer any justification or any you know they they don't have to offer any excuses or anything they can just be excited about a book safely and like turn to the person next to them who's probably in the same if not the same position they are in in like the time in their life and just sharing the enthusiasm of the books it's it's so inspiring and and at the same time you you need help to get there yes right i mean i i can tease a little bit that you might have some news sooner than people think, but yes. <laughs> but you need help to get there and to, to make this a realization of the vision that you've just laid out. So how can people help? We have a Kickstarter that is live and it runs through uh, October 31st at 10.31 a.m. Eastern time is when the campaign closes. That Kickstarter, we have um, rewards at every tier, uh, exclusive merchandise, and your name on the founder's wall, and a personal book concierge, and, and lots of fun things. But whether you donate $10 or $1,000, every dollar counts because that Kickstarter is our seed money to building out the bookstore. And... Um, when I say building out, that that means like turning it from a slipshod pulled together from like the the here's what we have in our storage unit used books into the fully fledged bookstore we want it to be. So donating to our Kickstarter today, <laughs> um, we're we're on limited time with our campaign, but we've been making a go of it because it's the two year anniversary of the book bike. So donating to our Kickstarter would be huge for helping us get there. Ah, oh, amazing. Kay Karimian, the non-binarian of the non-binarian book bike and soon to be the non-binarian bookstore. Thanks for talking to us again. Thank you for listening to Book to the Bookstore Education Podcast brought to you by the American Booksellers Association. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app. Additional educational resources can always be found on the ABA website at www.bookweb.org. Happy reading.